All right, what's up everybody? I wanted to make a video to go over some of the wiring steps for using your auxiliary switches. There's been a lot of questions that have come up on the forums about this. And so I thought maybe it'd be helpful to show what steps I took when I was installing my wiring. So if you have these auxiliary switches that look like this on your dashboard, then you should also have this underneath your hood. There's two separate connectors there, the dark gray and the light gray. Each one has four green plastic or rubber plugs that pull out to reveal the connectors. You should also have these four blunt cut wires that are positioned under your hood as well. Under the uh, driver's footwell, up under the dashboard, there's this gray connector. And that's with the wire plug connected to it now that comes with your new truck. And then there's also the second white connector. This one's a little bit further up underneath the dashboard it's pretty hard to reach. There's a little close-up picture of it there. It's a little awkward to get the connector all the way up there, but this is what it looks like once it's connected. So that's the second bundle of wire plugs that you get with your truck. And I'll show you now what I did. All right, so I just got both my auxiliary wiring harnesses plugged in. And I'll show you where they go here. So the gray one goes up here. You can see it plugs in right there. This one has the pass-through looped wires that go to make the tailgate wires hot, as well as this gray and beige, actually beige with a gray stripe wire, that is the additional pass-through that wasn't there on the prior years. This is first for 2021. Meanwhile, this is the second bundle. This has the additional bypass wires or should pass through, I should say, pass through wires that go to the under hood blunt cut wires, as well as the PTO wires. And then this black wire here, this thin black one, is a ground. And this one is a little bit harder to reach. It goes up under here and there's a white plug right there. The plug that comes with it is black and the receiving plug, the female end, is white. This is the gray bunch. This is a gray plug. This, this is a traditional pass-through bundle that people are, have been talked about before. So, just to show you here, if we take this little black wire here off of the second bunch, and if I test it here, you can see I'm getting a ground. So that is a good ground wire here. And then if I go up under here, this red and white stripe one here, that is a good 12 volt. It actually shows 13.2 volts, but that is a constant hot. And then this pink one here is the switched to the tailgate. So the pink one here, this is constant hot to the tailgate. The pink wire is switched to the tailgate. And I just tested this a second ago. If I turn on the ignition, Right now there's no feed, but if I turn on the ignition, this will turn hot, confirmed by my circuit tester here. So that's kind of a quick rundown on how these two plugs function here. So this purple wire with the green stripe that goes in that gray plug, this is the pass-through circuit that's in that uh, fourth pin position under the hood in the aux switch uh, plug setup. So this you can jump over to one of the aux switches under the hood, and then this will turn into a switched power source inside the cab of your truck. This is just a straight up pass through. And so if you go under the hood, this bundle, this gray here, along with these other three grays, these are blunt cut under the hood, and I'll show you where that is in a second. All right, so looking under the hood here, these are the two sets for the aux wiring switches where you can pop these out plug your wires in there this over here these are the four blunt cut wires and you can see they're gray or should sorry they're beige with different stripes there's a dark blue dark green gray and brown these were wrapped up with a little piece of yellow tape on top of this other electrical tape uh, that was concealing the color of them so i just peeled off the yellow tape and then underneath you can see the colors and these can just be peeled back a little bit more if you need to access them and tap into them. So these are just straight pass-throughs so that in theory you could take one of these if you wanted to, splice it, 
jump it into here to an aux switch, and then you'll have four additional wires. So basically if you wanted to wire, you can now wire five switches, aux switches into the cab without having to do any drilling. And this seems to be a new thing on the 2021 model year trucks. All right, let me show you guys my plan here for those of you who are interested in wiring radios or other communications like that into your ram cabs using the aux switches so i covered in the last video that these are the set of wires that come from the uh, back the black uh, accessory plug these come in from the wiring kit from the factory they plug into a white female receiver underneath you can see that other video to show exactly where these things plug in this is the regular pass-through bundle that includes looped wires to feed the rear tailgate wires, and then these two pass-throughs here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this regular, this is the regular pass-through that's been there on prior generations. I'm gonna tap this under the hood to go into one of the auxiliary switches. And then, if you so if you wanted to just have switch power, you could just tap into this pink wire. You could just uh, peel it back a little bit or cut it, splice into it, uh, do a butt connector, however you want to do it. You could just tap into this and you'll have ignition fed power in the cab. I thought about just doing that and I thought I have enough switches. I'm not going to use all six. So I figured I might as well use one of the aux switches that way. If the readers get annoying and I want to just kill them off, I don't have to reach both radio knobs separately to turn them off. I can just hit a button. It'll kill both the radio chatter. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to feed this under the uh, dash to probably aux five or six. And then this is the, this black wire is a good ground that comes off. So I have this extended. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a ground over here and I've got my president bill radio here. I might try to do a different job of mounting it. When I first tried it out, it actually fit really well down in this pocket. Um, but that was without the antenna plugged in. Once I plugged in the antenna, it makes it sit higher up in the pocket. It was sunk down nice and deep and it looked pretty nice. This sits a little bit up high, so we'll see. I'm gonna try it out like this. If I don't like it, I might move it to the outside or move it down into the center console. And then this is my Midland GMRS radio. And this is the one with the remote mic. And I got this on a, in a kit that came with an extension for this, which is kind of nice. So it has this plug here that plugs into the brains of the unit. And it has an extension that I have run over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the ground and power right about to here. I'm gonna tap into it with the President Bill wires here. There's a hard wire. The President Bill doesn't actually come with a, a DC plug, it just comes with hard wires. So those are gonna be wired together. I'm going to put butt connectors here to be able to extend an additional hot and ground to the back seat. Back here, which is where my Midland radio is going to be back here. And what I'm going to do, I have some heavy-duty like industrial Velcro. I'm just going to Velcro it right here. I don't see any need to, to drill down in here. Um, the Velcro will be fine. It'll hold it in place, and if I need to move it easily, I can move it without having damaged my carpeting and my uh, interior permanently. So this is the uh, the wiring kit for the remote mic. I'll set that up. I already have the antenna run. I need to find a better way to get the antenna in. Right now it's just through the door. And I might try to see if I can route it through the back. There's a fence behind these rear seats, I think. So I might see if I can do that. I just have to figure out the best ways to route it in without compromising any uh, water leaking or anything like that. So that's my plan. I'll show you how it looks in the end. All right, so now I've got my black grounds tied together. This is the ground from under the dash with the ground wire for the CB radio. This red wire is the hot from under the dash. It's spliced onto the purple and green wire for the pass-through. So this is wrapped up with the hot for the CB. So I'm gonna put butt, connect butt connectors on both of these and then I'll be able to continue on a ground and a hot to go back to the Midland 
GMRS radio. All right, so now I've got these all connected up. I've got them extended here. They've got butt connectors. They're all taped up. And then this is gonna run, I'm gonna tuck this all behind the seat here, next to the seat in the center console. And these are gonna run behind it here. And then these are gonna come out here. I'm just gonna run these down underneath the floor mat here so they're hidden. And then they're gonna come out right under here. And then there's a, another connector that will plug in there. I'll show you how that'll look. And they'll connect right up and we should be good to go. All right, so here's the power connector that came with the Midland radio. So this just snaps into here. And then this actually came with a cigarette lighter plug on it. And so what I did is I just cut it. I cut it after the fuse. That way I can still maintain this inline fuse that comes. It's nice that they give you that. Just a little extra protection. So I just cut it. I split the wires down to separate them, stripped them, twisted them. And now they're ready so I can put butt connectors on here and connect it to my power and my ground that I just showed you that I ran back here. And we'll be good to go. Piece of cake. So I'm working on tucking the wires away a little bit. One of the random things I love about these trucks is look how much the seat adjusts on this. I mean, obviously nobody would ever drive like that. You can't. But the seat, both front uh, passenger and front driver seats have just a ton of adjustability. So it's helpful because when you're trying to do things like hide wires, it gives you a little bit more access underneath the seat. So I have everything tucked down here on the side and I'm not too worried about it, but just trying to kind of make it look somewhat organized and nice looking so it's out of sight, out of mind. I'm tucking this stuff underneath here. And then I actually have my factory floor mats underneath here still. Uh, this is the antenna wire, which is gonna be rerun later. Uh, so I actually popped this up and ran the power cords under there that way it's a little bit more secured. It can't slip out the side because this grommet is holding it in place. And this covers it all up. And then they slide out the back under here. And so here are my power leads and my ground. And they're just gonna be connected up to these butt connectors. And so I got this mostly all tied it up. This is the extension for that Midland mic. And if I slide this all the way back, you can see I have it pretty well hidden up front, so you really don't see anything. I took both of those factory wiring harnesses and I tucked all the wires down just behind the floor mat here, or the floor liner, I should say, the factory one. You can see some of them are peeking up a little bit there at the back. But I basically have everything tucked in. And then the ones that I'm using, I tucked down underneath here, tucked them all in. You can see where they come out here. I'll finish tucking them all the way into the back here so they're even more out of sight. I'm just gonna work on getting them up under there a little bit. And then that should be good. All right, so I got everything pretty well hidden here. And then, uh, so I cut out just uh, like a two inch square. I just eyeballed it in the garage and actually came out just about right. Just like a two inch by two inch square of Velcro. I stuck it on here. And you see, you don't even need the fuzzy part because the floor is fuzzy. So I'm just gonna stick this on, Let's see if that works. So it doesn't hold it great, but it's enough that it, it stops it from sliding back and forth at least. Um, so I think I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Uh, we'll see, I might decide to bolt it down if it seems like it's too loose. I'll drive around with it for a bit and see how I like it. We'll see, I can always uh, screw it in if I really need to. All right, so this is the setup in the back. Everything's pretty well tucked away. And then, Going back up to the front, that last bit of wire that was hanging out, I got rid of that. I was trying to do it before uh, with one hand while I was filming. It didn't work, it took a little bit more convincing. So I had to actually use both fingers to get this part here. It's a little bit tighter, there's a little bit less room here 
than there was over at this end. This end was really easy. Uh, but I got it all hidden up. You can see where it peeks out way at the back there, but it's going to be out of sight. And right now the antenna wire and the power wires run just out of this pocket. And I thought about drilling out the bottom of this, pulling off this piece. I haven't figured out yet exactly how this and this come out. Uh, but I'm just really hesitant to drill too many holes in this brand new truck that I just spent a ridiculous amount of money on. Uh, so for now, I just ran them out the side. You can't really see them. It's hidden by the seat pretty well. So I'm all right with it. I think it's going to sit pretty well here once it's powered on. When you're sitting in the seat, you can look down and see everything easily. But if I don't like it down the road, I'll reposition it. It won't be a big deal. All right, now I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail on this because there's a couple other videos that show the under the hood wiring. I can always do another one if, if somebody has questions on it, but this is the factory instructions that come in this bag of wires from the dealer when you get your new truck. They're pretty limited. They do have some online resources here that you can go to, and I've spent a ton of time reading through this. Uh, thankfully, the folks at the HD Rams forums have been super useful and uh, helpful. So I've learned a lot by reading through the threads on there and asking stupid questions. Um, so basically this is the bottom plug. You can see it's the light gray one from the picture here. I just pulled it out from under the dashboard. And so you can see this is the pass-through violet yellow. That was the wire that I showed you coming out from under the dashboard. That I already ran through to be this uh, red hot wire to, hire, to wire these electronics in the cab, my two radios. This one is ground, which is right here. So this is the pass-through violet, and this is aux six, and this is aux five. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use aux six since it's right next to it. I'm gonna pull out these two plugs. I'm gonna basically just tap a wire into here, tap another one into there, and just place them together, and that's it. That should be all I need to do. I'll show you what that looks like I'm gonna use these wires that came in this kit here. And it's interesting, a lot of the videos on YouTube I've seen, people just use the pliers, they pop it out, this green plug out, and they pop in the wire plug right away. But in the instructions, and in another one of the YouTube videos online, it shows you actually have to release this white plug that's down in there. You can see there's a little white retainer clip. You actually have to release that first and then put everything in. So I'm gonna try doing that, make sure I do it the right way. And I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. All right, so I got the two bottom plugs pulled out. This is what they look like. I got them pulled out using my needle nose screwdriver. And then I got the white plug on the back extracted. You can see how it's pulled out just like an eighth of an inch there maybe. That was a little bit of a pain to try to get purchase on that little release tab. What I ended up doing, I have a little flathead and this was actually too big. And so I actually just used one of these little miniature wires that come with it. And I'm not gonna be using these. I think these are for the PTO kit. So I actually just used this and this worked great. I just took this one, even these blades are too big. So I took this small bladed wire and I stuck it in there, just jammed it in where that clip is. And then I used my needle nose pliers to pull out on that part. And now it's ready for me to set up the wires. All right, so I got all the wires laid out here. These, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are the ones that will fit in these aux inputs. Doesn't really matter which ones you use where. Uh, obviously there's one that's black, so you'd want that to be the ground. The uh, pass-through that comes out through the dash is uh, violet with yellow here. And so might as well use that same one for the pass-through. Then I need the other one for the aux six switch. And uh, it doesn't really matter again, but on the coloring code, I'm gonna double check, but I think it's the pink and yellow is for number six. So I might as well do it by the schematic, just in case down the road I sell it, everything will be done the right way. Uh, like I said, it doesn't really matter. You can pick whatever colors you want, but since the, sch the schematic does lay out a different color coded wire for each auxiliary number plug, not really a big deal because under the dash, you can see right where it goes. Obviously, this is going to be plugged into six. And it's just going to be jumpered right over to this one. So it's not like it's going to be a mystery on where it, where it goes. It's not going to disappear anywhere into the truck. Um, but whatever. It'll make my OCD happy to use the color that it has listed in the 
correct PDF. All right, so I got my two wires inserted. It's pretty cool, they make a click when they plug in so you can tell that they're in there. You can pull them, they're firm, they're not going anywhere. And all I'm gonna do is just splice these two together, put a connector on there, and I'll go plug it into the dash. I'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, so I got this all wired up. I just jumpered the two wires together here uh, with a butt connector and it's all taped up, lots of tape to make sure it stays dry. And I'm just gonna pop this back in now. So that's locked back into place. You can see how it's flush now. I thought about making this shorter because obviously it doesn't need to be this long, but these wires seem to be somewhat hard to come by, meaning that uh, once you've used the initial kit, you can't really buy the replacement kit anywhere. So I opted to leave them longer just so that in the future I have more room to cut them and recut them and resplice them if I need to, if I need some kind of different application for them. So that's my thinking on that. So we're going to take this here. Here's the dark gray set here. Here's the receptacle for the light gray set. And just guys work this in. It's a little bit tight. All right, so guess what? I just realized I messed up. This thing goes on its side, which means that I actually jumpered the wrong two together. I jumpered it to the ground instead of to aux switch, aux six switch. This is number six down here. This is the ground. I messed up because I was not looking at the right way. When you look at it like this, it looks like this is up, but this is actually, it actually sits sideways. And if you look at it, there are actual numbers here. I don't know if you can see them, but they're really tiny. Right there, see one and three. So I messed up, I gotta re, uh, do it real quick. Shouldn't be too bad, I just gotta pop those out and put them in the right places. Stand by. All right, so I just spent a minute sweating because I could not get these wires out. You know, I showed you when I plugged them in that they have a nice positive click. I could not get them out. I was trying to figure out with a little screwdriver. I tried using this small clip again that fits in there nicely. I could not get, in, get them. I tried to do a YouTube search, could not find it on YouTube. And I finally figured it out based off of the empty ones. I was able to see there's a little gray piece in there. Those, see those two little gray pieces? And what you do is that's a positive lock button. You push down like that and that releases the wire and I couldn't see it on the ones that were plugged in because they were partially depressed already. Uh, so, and so if you need to pop them out, you take a very small screwdriver. It has to be uh, super small. The one I used was this. It's almost like a jeweler's screwdriver. And again, you just put it in there and you press down on that little gray piece that's right in the center there. All right, now I'm going to do it the right way. All right, so now I've got them extracted. I swapped the, pulled the green plug out of here, put this one back in there. And you can see that two and four right there. See right on the side there, two and four. So this is plug two. That is pink and, uh, pink and yellow for aux six. And this is plug four. That is the violet and yellow for the pass-through. And the reason why I messed this up the first time is because I was looking at it like this. You would think it, it's oriented top to bottom. Well, in the car, or the truck I should say, it actually sits sideways. And so the two bottom positions are actually looking like that. So now I can plug this back into here and then we'll go do it, uh, install it under the dash, excuse me, under the hood and we'll be good to go. All right, so here we are installed correctly now. Here's my plug. And it's gonna go under the dash, excuse me, I keep saying that, under the hood, right here. And it's a little bit tight because this big ground 
off the battery is right where you want to be. But you can hear it click into place and then there's this red plug on the side. It's a little retention clip. I'm gonna go like that, snap that down. And now it is all buttoned up. Now it's the moment of truth. If we go back into the truck, I'm gonna turn this on. Don't actually need it started. I just want the ignition on. All right, now I'm gonna go over here down to aux six. Let's see if this turns on here. There we go. The radio's on. And let's see if this bad boy turns on. There we go. We've got power. And then if I turn this off, both of the radios are killed. Success.